sitting in art form office, and my name is Simone Forty. I um, worked with Anna Halperin from 1955 to 1959. Um, um, she was starting out to um, work with improvisation, and um, it was a very exciting moment because she um, had been part of let's say a modern dance school, the Halperin Lathrop School, and um, I met her just at the moment that she was leaving the school and to focus on improvisation. And so she was very excited about what she was doing and, and um, so that's a wonderful time to meet a teacher just at a really special moment in her life. Uh, I was married to Robert Morris and um, uh, after we'd been in San Francisco for four or five years, um, and he was painting uh, abstract expressionist paintings, um, large canvases, and um, in a sense needing to go to New York to, to look at, at the work of the people who were inspiring him. He was a young, young painter. And after four years, I think I was ready to, to, to distance myself from my mentor, uh, and we moved to New York. When I got here, I kind of didn't know what to do. I, I tried a few schools. I, I did one June intensive at the Martha Graham School, but um, I couldn't do it. And also, I wasn't that interested in it. Uh, I tried Cunningham classes, I couldn't do it, uh, and it wasn't for me. But that's where um, I came across Robert Dunn, who was um, playing piano for the classes. His wife, Judith Dunn, was in the company. John Cage was the director of music, the artistic director of music, and Robert Dunn was very much studying John Cage, reading his writings, um, talking to him, um, studying his music, his, his process, uh, and, um, and Robert Dunn decided to teach a, a composition class for the dancers. And um, I took that class and that uh, was as important to me as having worked with Anna Halperin. Um, I, I feel that Anna Halperin's work and Robert Dunn's work coming together uh, really set me on my path. At first Robert had us working with some of John Cage's scores uh, and eventually um, conveyed the idea that we could, we could do pretty much whatever we wanted, just so we were clear about what we were doing. I remember one uh, assignment was to uh, bring in a three-minute dance at, to the next class and to not work on it for more than three minutes. So in a way it was an introduction to conceptual work, that, that we had to get an idea that really interested us and, and then just do it. For me, as um, dancers, uh, we w I think we were not so connected to our predecessors in the field of dance. We were more involved in a discourse with musicians, composers, poets, um, painters, uh, we were more interested in in what was happening in in a, a re envisioning art, um, re envisioning um, relationship to audience, re envisioning the whole question of of um, skill. The way in the visual arts. Uh, artists had been free for generations to explore whatever direction and to to um, create whatever form, whatever process um, 
was urgent to them, we now as dancers could do that too. We didn't have to dance on a stage, we didn't have to leap, um, we didn't have to wear certain kinds of costumes. Um, we were artists working in the medium of movement. When I was uh, in Bob Dunn's class and he was talking about John Cage, he said something about him that um, was important to me. And he said that John had wanted to be able to hear sound and that when he listened to music uh, that was in any way traditional, he'd know that after this sound and that sound and that sound, then there could be this or that or that, but it was going to be one of them, that there was some form in which it was going to resolve itself. And that he always had like a double experience, at least this is what I remember of the story, that he always had a double experience of the sound itself and the expectation. And he wanted to be able to just hear sound without any expectation, so he could hear the sound of the sound. And I felt from that that if you need something, you can create a structure that will give it to you. And I had just left San Francisco. I had just left the trees. I had just left the mountains. I needed to climb. I needed to feel my physical strength. I needed a, a sense of non-stylistic body, as a, just as a body, as bodies, and um, reflexes, and nature. And it occurred to me that I could, I could make this little mountain, which I call the huddle, but sometimes when I teach it, especially in Europe where they don't know what a huddle is, I call it the mountain. And I could make this little mountain and be part of that structure or climb on it, that I could make something that would give me what I was needing.